Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, the Writing Reproducible Scientific Papers in R uh, tutorial series. Uh, we're on video six today, and today we're going to be talking about statistical tests. So, obviously, it's a it's a area that you could have uh, thirty videos on on all different types of tests. But the idea is to just get your feet wet in doing some of the more basic tests, doing t tests, ANOVAs, and we'll do a little bit of linear regression, which, you know, they're all kind of the same, different sides of the same coin or different sides of the same die. Um, so we'll talk about that and how to use it uh, in R in our studio and using them a little bit in R Markdown. Um, and so we'll just go straight from there. So as you can see here, um, we have our files. So this is the first eight, uh, first papaya output, which I misspelled, um, but you should have a file that looks like this where the title is the first APA formatted paper ever. Um, I've gone ahead and I've taken some lorem ipsum kind of just uh, garbled text and I've just started filling things out so that it can start looking like a paper, right? So I've put in an abstract. Um, I've gone ahead and added an introduction. So this is all false text, but you know, if you're writing a paper, you can go ahead and write the introduction before you do any statistics. And if you're writing a registered report, uh, that's something you could do. Introduction and methods are all things you can do before you collect data. So uh, here's my introduction. It's several paragraphs long. I go into methods and participants materials. This is all just filling in text. Okay, and so we get to what we've seen before. So this is loading in our iris data set, and I'll clear this for now. Um, an important thing to do before you ever start is to load your packages. And you'll see a new package here called Broom, which I'll talk about in a moment. And also run your random number generator to set a seed for your analyses. That will come baked in uh, to Papaya, so you'll see that there's a seed generation block that's always there when you open a new uh, Papaya file. Okay, so we have Iris. This is our data. We made these uh, groups, Satosa, no Satosa. Uh, we made a new... Uh, variable called petal area and we made a graph great okay so let's start actually doing statistical tests and i've already pre-coded these because i don't want to make a million mistakes and have you uh, have to suffer through that or me suffer through editing all of it so we have tests already done so let's start with t-tests right t-tests are a mean comparison test between two groups where you're comparing uh you're looking to see if the mean difference uh, between those two groups is different from zero, right? Where zero would be the null hypothesis, there's no difference between groups. Literally the difference, right? The subtraction of one to the other. Um, and the alternative hypothesis is that uh, there is a difference between the two, that there is some non-zero number when you subtract one mean from the other. Okay, so we know that in our data set, Iris, uh, we have three species, right? We have Setosa, we have Versicolor, and we have Virginica. So the first thing we want to do is we only want two groups because the t-test is only when we have two groups. So we want Setosa and Versicolor. Those are the two species that I chose. So what we're going to do is just make data frames for each one. So right here I have Setosa is an object that I'm creating from Iris, the data set, and then I pipe in the filter species equals Setosa. So when I run that, I get a new uh, data frame over here called Satosa with 50 observations. So those are my Satosa observations. Everything Satosa, petal area, width, length, so on and so on. I'll do the same thing for Versicolor. Run that, and I get a Versicolor data frame that's going to look very similar, except that the species is Versicolor. Perfect. So now I want to do a t-test where I'm comparing the petal length the mean petal length of one species to the mean petal length of the next species. So this is the code that's uh, important for the t-test. So we're going to call it an object, petal underscore t-test, give it the arrow. So you're going to open the function t.test, open parentheses, Satosa dollar sign petal length. So what this is doing is saying, from the data frame Satosa, take the data petal.length. So if you look at the Satosa data frame, we have petal.length. So we're taking all 50 observations here. So whenever you use a dollar sign like that, what you're saying is this column, 
I want the petal.length column from Satosa. Okay, so we have Satosa dollar sign petal.length, comma, and then our other group, which is going to be versa color, dollar sign petal.length. Now here you can tell it'd be very easy to compare some other column like petal width or sepal length, but that doesn't make sense theoretically for your t-test, right? So you want to do petal length for both. And then just to do a straight, regular, independent samples t-test, uh, the assumption is that the variance with uh, in each group is equal to each other. So we're going to say var.equal equals t or true to say that there's the equal variance assumption is true. If you don't include this statement, var.equal equals true, you just delete that, what you're going to do is a Welch's t-test, which adjusts your degrees of freedom uh, for breaking that assumption. Let's not worry about that for now. Let's just do this. So we're going to run this. We see we get a new thing called pedal t-test, which is a list. And we can print that list. So print, open parentheses, pedal underscore t-test, which is our object. And we get an output. So now we have run a t-test, and this is our t-test output. So it's saying our data, uh, it's saying a two-sample t-test, great. Um, our data is a TOSA pedal length and VersaColor pedal length. Our T value is negative 39.493 with 98 degrees of freedom. So you remember in a T test, if you're doing it by hand, degrees of freedom is usually your total N minus two or uh, N minus one for one group plus N minus one for the other group. And since we have 50 observations in each group, that gives us degrees of freedom of 98. And our P value, which is very, 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 very small. So in this case, we would conclude that there is a significant difference in petal length uh, between Satosa and VersaColor. And since our T is negative, we would say that Satosa petal length is smaller than VersaColor, is what this test is telling us. Um, here, the mean of X is 1.46, so that's the average petal length for Satosa. Uh, if we look at Satosa, we can see, okay, petal length 1.4, 1.3, 1.5, that number seems right. And if we look at the mean of Y, this is the mean of petal length for VersaColor of 4.26. And we can look at VersaColor, we look at petal length, we see 4.7, 4.5, 4.0. So that makes sense. And if you wanted to, you could even use dplyr, you can use the summarize verb to actually calculate what the average is, just to confirm that what you're looking at is what you think you're looking at. It's always good to do these sanity checks. Um, and are we got a 95% confidence interval of negative 2.93 to negative 2.6, right? So this is saying that the mean difference between our two groups, uh, the average petal length of Satosa versus the average petal length of VersaColor is between negative 2.9 and negative 2.6. Uh, and there you go. So now you have just run a t-test saying uh, the average petal length of Satosa petals uh, is significantly less than the average petal length of VersaColor, um, and you've done it in R. So uh, given the amount of time, let's leave it there, and the next video we're going to talk about ANOVA, and I'll try to do linear model, uh, linear regression at the same time, since they're very similar, um, and perfect. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Twitter, at NickFoxStats. Uh, if you like this video and you like this series, give it a big thumbs up. Hit the bell to get notifications when the next videos come out. And I will see you shortly with the next video on ANOVAs and linear regression. So, see ya!